Our next senior is TJ Crowder. TJ is a sports psychology major from Columbus, Ohio, and a three-year member of the Bison. He's joined today by his mother, his grandma, and Coach Arnold. TJ has appeared in 17 games, totaling 39 tackles, 2.5 for loss, three pass breakups, and one fumble recovery. He's also a member of the Black Student Union. After graduation, he plans on living life with no regrets. Ladies and gentlemen, TJ Crowder. Our next senior is Noah Gill. Noah is a sports management major from Beach City, Ohio, and a one-year member of the Bison. He is joined today by his parents, Jim and Kathy Gill. Noah has appeared in four games this season and has forced one fumble. He's a member of the honors program, Omicron Delta Kappa, Beta Theta Pi, and Student Government Association. After graduation, he plans on receiving his master's in sports administration. His favorite memory is playing the best game one last time with his best friends. Ladies and gentlemen, Noah Gill. Our next senior is John Gilman. John is a business management major with a minor in entrepreneurship from Sheridan, Montana, and a four-year member of the Bison. He's joined today by his dad, Steve. He's appeared in nine games, has John, is the SAC president and a Kalen scholar. After graduation, John plans on attending graduate school at Bethany College. His favorite memory is defeating nationally ranked Carnegie Mellon at home his freshman year. Ladies and gentlemen, John Gilman. Our next senior is Khalil Jordan. Khalil is a psychology major from Miami, Florida and a four-year member of the Bison. He's joined today by Cosmo Jordan. Khalil has appeared in 10 games with 17 total tackles. After graduation, he plans on getting into coaching and his favorite Bethany memory is the first time that it snowed. Ladies and gentlemen, Khalil Jordan. Our next senior is Kawan McLaughlin. Kawan is a sports medicine major from Cleveland, Ohio, and a four-year member of the Bison. He is joined today by his mom, Charlotte, his grandma, Virginia, his sister, Royale, and his girlfriend, Jayla. Kawan has appeared in 18 games and has totaled 34 tackles, three interceptions, and one touchdown. He's also a member of the Bethany track and field team. After graduation, he plans on getting his master's in sports leadership. His favorite memory is from last season when he had his first collegiate pick six against Teal College. Ladies and gentlemen, Kawan McLaughlin. Our next senior is Tim Mickens. Tim is a psychology major from Ocala, Florida and a four-year member of the Bison. He's joined today by his mother and stepfather, Tawana and Elijah James. 
Tim has appeared in 29 games while hauling in 22 receptions for 254 yards and one touchdown. He's a member and has served as president of Alpha Sigma Phi. After graduation, he plans on getting into social work and being a coach at his alma mater. His favorite memory is beating Carnegie Mellon his freshman year. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Mickens. Our next senior is Trey Owens. Trey is a sports communication major from Baltimore, Maryland, and a four-year member of the Bison. He is joined today by his mother, Thais Hamilton, aunts Janine and Shauna, and Uncle Malik. Trey has appeared in 18 games in his career. Before making the switch to running back, he totaled 30 tackles, four for loss. This season, he has rushed for 730 yards and has scored four touchdowns. He's a member of the Black Student Union and Alpha Sigma Phi. After graduation, he plans on coaching or working at a news station. His favorite memory is meeting TJ and becoming Brody's and also joining Alpha Sigma Phi. Ladies and gentlemen, Trey Owens. Our next senior is Marquise Robinson. Marquise is a sports psychology major from Miami Gardens, Florida, and a four-year member of the Bison. He is joined today by his teammates Charlie Mills and Chris Williams. Marquise has appeared in 19 games with 1,439 career passing yards, 136 rushing yards, and 12 touchdowns. After graduation, he plans on getting into the firefighting field or returning to Bethany for his Masters. His favorite memories are the COVID year and scoring his first touchdown against Westminster. Ladies and gentlemen, Marquise Robinson. Our next senior is Colton Stoneman. Colton is a business management major from West Farmington, Ohio, and a four-year member of the Bison. He's joined today by his parents, Bill and Rochelle Stoneman. Colton has appeared in 27 games, has rushed 154 times for 343 yards, and has scored twice. Colton's also a member of the Bethany baseball team. After graduation, he plans to work in the family business. His favorite memory is scoring his first touchdown at Westminster. Ladies and gentlemen, Colton Stoneman. Our next senior is Dadrick Vickers. Dadrick is a sports management major from Miami, Florida, and a four-year member of the Bison. He's joined today by Rashana Woods and Corey Washington. Dadrick has been an essential piece to the Bison defense, appearing in 52 games, totaling 69 tackles, 10 interceptions, and 16 pass breakups. He earned PAC Newcomer of the Year ECAC Defensive Rookie of the Year and has been named all PAC second and honorable mention teams. He currently sits tied for fourth on Bethany's all-time interceptions list. After graduation, he plans on returning to Bethany as a grad student. His favorite memory is freshman year against Teal where he had three interceptions. Ladies and gentlemen, Dadrick Vickers. 
Our next senior is Kajel White. Kajel is a psychology major with a minor in criminal justice from Trenton, New Jersey, and a three-year member of the Bison. He's joined by Coach Rob and Coach Arnold. Kajel has appeared in 19 games on the offensive line and is a member of Beta. After graduation, he plans on becoming a police officer. His favorite memory is beating Carnegie Mellon his freshman year. Ladies and gentlemen, Kajel White. Our next senior is Ben Wright the fourth. Ben is a professional chemistry major with a track in engineering from Bridgeville, Pennsylvania, and a four-year member of the Bison. He is joined today by his mom, Tanya May, and girlfriend, Valeria Osario, along with his sister, Kayla Ruthridge. Ben has appeared in 19 games on the offensive line and is a member of American Chemical Society. After graduation, he plans on moving to Texas and attend Geisinger for his master's in biomedical science. His favorite memories are beating Carnegie Mellon and hanging out with friends. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Wright. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the Bethany College football team would like to honor a former teammate who tragically lost his life in June of 2021. Please join us as we honor Mitchell Sutera. <laughs> Mitchell was an education major with a minor in history from Auburn, Ohio, and a two-year member of the Vice City. We are joined today by his dad, Darren Sutera, and stepmom, Bridget. He was a member of Delta Tau Delta Fraternity and appeared in 10 games while registering 11 tackles. He planned on being a history teacher and enjoyed hanging out with roommates and his fiance Jordan, who also attended Bethany. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in remembering number 97, Mitchell Sotera. Ladies and gentlemen, how about one more round of applause for our senior football players? Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Don Alt Field on the campus of Bethany College 
for today's PAC football matchup featuring the visiting Allegheny College Gators in your Bethany College Bison. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, let us all please rise and remove our hats as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Please welcome the Bethany College Band. Week 10 of PAC football is upon us here at Don Oak Field at Bison Stadium for today's matchup between the visiting Allegheny Gators and your Bethany Bison. Welcome everyone on the PAC Digital Network. Drew Von Sayo here alongside Dylan Bazika. Allegheny entering today with a record of 2-7 and seven overall and 1-6 and six in conference play. The Gators are looking to rebound after a 54-7 loss at home last week against Case Western Reserve and are wanting to end the season on a positive note in their final game of the season. Head coach Rich Nagy looks to avoid six straight losses here against Bethany. As for Bethany, they enter today 1-7 overall and winless in six tries in conference play. The Bison lost last week on the road against Geneva 34-6 and are looking for their first win since week one against Hiram here on Senior Day. Head coach Brandon Robinson looking to cap off the 2022 home slate with a victory this afternoon. I'll bring in my broadcast partner now, Dylan Bazika. Dylan, what are the Bison going to have to do today to be successful? Yeah, well, tell you what the Bison has to do to get order to get a win today. The offense has been kind of rough looking the past couple weeks. If they can get some offense going on early, I think we have a good chance of doing it. Plus our defense, they've been out there way too much. They're more out on the field than the offense is most of the time, so they're tired a little bit. And the defense can get some big stops and force some turnovers. I feel like uh, Bison can win this game here, Drew. Absolutely. As you mentioned, Bethany's defense being out on the field way too long. So we have the coin toss going on now at midfield with our referee, Tony Lascola. Chance for Bethany, as we mentioned, to get one last win here at home. It is senior day with quite a lot of seniors being recognized here for their achievements and accomplishments in the Bethany football program. Of course, one of the seniors being honored is quarterback Marquise Robinson. So the Bison won the toss, deferred to the second half, and Allegheny is set to receive the opening kickoff. And Dylan will get to see that Bison defense 
right from the get-go here today, and that'll be a big test for them. Yeah, Allegheny's offense is it's a nice, ni nice offense. I really don't know what – you know what rank they are in the PAC at all? I believe they are definitely in the bottom half. I want to say – eighth in the conference as far as total offense so our defense will be I mean, the, the offense is all right i guess but our defense i think is better than their offense and i think we'll get some stops here early and hopefully get some early points here on the board we see the kickoff unit make their way on for the bison return team on for the gators John McArdle doing the kickoff duties as per usual for the Bison. It's Levi Swartz along with Marcus Harold Jr. back deep for the Gators. McArdle with the run up. Booming kick fielded at about the 17-yard line by Swartz. Swartz running right up the middle, getting a block from Harrell, his kick return teammate, and then being brought down at about the 35-yard line. And that's where the Gator offense will start with Jack Johnson, junior quarterback out of Hingham, Massachusetts. Yeah, that was great blocking by the kick return there for Allegheny. Got up to the 35-yard line and got a great field position to start this first drive for the Allegheny Gators. The Gators coming out here. Three lined up wide. In the backfield, Trey Worship, the running back, getting the ball right from the get-go, trying to cut his way upfield, being brought down after a gain of one. Worship entered today with 679 yards and seven rushing touchdowns on 156 attempts so far this season. And now he lines up to the left of Jack Johnson. Worship getting the ball again, trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Loses a pair of yards in the process as Jordan Aldridge brought him down in the backfield. Yeah, great back-to-back -back play for the Bethany defense here, Drew. Only allowing about a yard on the first play and loss of two on this second play. And the Bethany defense, man, they're playing for the seniors today, Drew. I they want to win this game today for the seniors. Absolutely. Certainly can't blame them there. The Gators line up four wide, including three to the wide side right. Johnson getting the snap, dropping back to pass, floating one up on the left side. And that is going to be hauled in on the far side by Declan O'Brien. A huge pickup there for the Gators to move the chains. Yeah, what a catch by Declan O'Brien. The corner there was in tight coverage on him. He was getting smothered, and he just had a great catch there. Great awareness, too, knowing where the first down marker was at and got enough for Allegheny first down. It was Kawan McLaughlin who was in coverage as Johnson hands the ball off to Worship once again being brought down after a pickup of two down to the Bison 33-yard line. It was Khalil Jordan getting credited with the stop. And yes, this is an Allegheny offense, currently eighth in the PAC, averaging just over 22 points per game. Lined up with two receivers on the wide side right. Johnson going to take his time here as far as the play call. Gets the snap, hands it off to Worship once again, fighting his way up the middle, down to the 31-yard line. Another pickup of two yards as Jordan Aldridge brought him down to set up a third and six. The Bison defense, as we mentioned, looking to get off the field rather quickly as they've been tired out very frequently over the course of the season. Worship lining up to the left of Johnson. Fakes the handoff, Johnson firing in tight coverage there. And it's Isaiah Thomas who knocks that one away. And now decision time for the Gators. Yeah, great, great pass break out there by Isaiah Thomas. No one 
And Allegheny deciding to keep the offense out on the field. It is a smart move for Allegheny College here. Allegheny Gators getting here. So fourth and sixth, very manageable fourth down here. And you might as well go for it. I mean, we're, both schools are at the bottom of the PAC, so you might as well go for it. Johnson dropping back, trying to hit the hands of Dursey, but it's in and out, and it goes down as a turnover on downs for the Bison. Marquise Robinson and company setting up shop at their 31-yard line. And Dylan, sometimes that's the gift that this Bison defense needs. Yeah, you're telling me. Great gift there by the offense there. That dude dropping that wide open pass there. Bethany offense is going to have some good field position here to start early, and hopefully this offense can get things going early on. Because you know in the past couple weeks, Bethany offense, first couple drives, they haven't been, get, been able to get anything going on offense. Robinson lining up in the shotgun. First play of scrimmage, faking the handoff to Trey Owens, taking a shot deep downfield, trying to find Jacob Munoz, and it's intercepted by Shane Cafardi. That's his second INT of the season. One play, and the Bison defense back out on the field. One interception by Sean Cafardi. Drew, if you saw, he caught, that was one hand. He caught that sucker one-handed for an interception. What a play by Sean Cafardi. And like, like I said earlier, First couple of drives for the Bethany offense can't get nothing going. The first drive for the offense forcing a turnover right off the rip. You hate to see it. It was Jacob Munoz who was the intended receiver there for the Bison. Robinson's pass ultimately overthrown and ending up in the right hand of Shane Cafardi. As you mentioned, Dylan, an incredible grab to say the least. A lot of motion here in the Allegheny offense as we see Dursey moving from the slot on the right to the wide side left. Johnson pitching it out on the read option to Worship, breaking one tackle, fighting his way to get back to the original line of scrimmage. T. Fofang getting in there along with John Henry Rouse. Just over three minutes gone here in the first quarter. No score between the Gators and the Bison. Johnson faking the handoff to Worship. Plenty of time to fire that one over the middle of the field. And that pass is intercepted. It's Isaiah Thomas for the Bison. His third pick of the season. And the Bison offense getting right back out on the field. Man, back-to-back -back picks here for both offenses. Drew, you love to see it. And what a play by Isaiah Thomas. Saw the ball, was thrown a little bit short, went up and made a big play for it. The junior out of Columbus, Ohio, making the play for the Bison defense. Sparks some flames in the Bethany offense and give them another chance to put points on the board as Bethany lines up three wide here Owens to the left of Robinson bit of a low snap and now Robinson fumbling it able to fall on it a loss there of two yards yeah, a little bit of information there in the option there the QB option there and hopefully thankfully he fell on that ball and didn't get another turnover absolutely this is a Bethany offense 10th in the PAC averaging about 12 and a half points per game certainly a number that coach Robinson is going to want to improve on as the handoff goes to Trey Owens back up the middle returning to the original line of scrimmage to set up a third and ten here for the Bison yeah, nice hard fought run there by Trey Owens, getting a couple yards there. It's going to be a nice third and long here for the Bison. Hopefully we can, get, hopefully we can convert this third down here, Drew. It was Maxwell Hammond who brought down Trey Owens, senior out of Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Now with 35 tackles on the campaign for the Gators. Robinson getting the snap, flipping it out to Owens on a swing route out of the backfield. Owen's going to have his forward progress stopped at the 33-yard line. A pickup there of about three yards in the punt unit making their way on for the Bison. Yeah, that running back screen didn't go as planned as Coach Robinson had hoped, only getting about three yards there, forcing the Bethany Bison to punt here again back. Oh, it's a pair of 82s on for both teams. Landon Bailey, the punter, along with the punt returner for the Gators, Ian Dursey. Back deep to receive, number 82, Ian Dursey. 
Bailey set to punt from his own 20-yard line. Dursey standing at his 35. Booming punt there from Bailey, sending Dursey all the way back. Dursey just going to let this one take a favorable bounce, and it's going to be downed at the 15-yard line. And Dylan, this is the first time all season we've seen a booming punt from a Bison punter. Yeah, it was a great punt, but there is a flag on the play, Drew. Coming at the 30-yard line, the line of, original line of scrimmage where the Bison offense started. As we see Tony Lascola and a few members of his crew talking this one over. That'll go against Allegheny as a hold. Was Isaiah Roman the one who held there? And that penalty being enforced at the end of the kick. So that'll back up Allegheny to their own eight yard line. Dylan, this is huge for the Bison defense now with Allegheny having to really drive down the field. Yeah, this is big here for the Bison. They can get a stop here. Offense is bad starting field position, and hopefully we can get a force a three and out or maybe force another turnover like we did last drive. Three, John Ian Doron with the Jack kick. Johnson handing it off to Doron there, running right up the gut. Five, a pickup of five yards to split the difference there between what he needed and what he got. Doron again lined up to the left of Johnson, faking the handoff, firing it over the middle. That pass going to be hauled in by Trey Adams just beyond the first down marker. They needed six and got seven. As the Gators move the sticks. We saw them pick up a first down on the opening possession before it ultimately stalled out due to a four and out. Johnson faking the handoff once again, trying to flip it to the far side to find Austin Ferguson, but in and out of his hands, and it hits the turf. Ferguson, the senior out of Creedmoor, North Carolina, getting his first target of the afternoon and couldn't haul it in. And Allegheny now set to line up three receivers wide. 8.41 to go in the opening quarter. Handoff there goes the door on, cutting back inside, barreling his way forward down to the 30-yard line. Sean Wheeler making the initial contact there on door on. Will set up a third and three. Yeah, great pick. Nice run there by Duron there, picking up seven yards on a nice hard-fought run. It's going to set up a nice third and three for the Allegheny Gators offense here. And let's see what they do here, Drew. Motion there for the tight end, Sean Stelling. Handing it off right back up the middle to Doron, who trips in the backfield. Lost a, yard of, lost a yard in the process. And the punt return team makes their way on for the Bison. As Doron rather frustrated at the fact that he got pulled down by the turf monster. Yeah, Doron wish he had that one back, tripping over the turf monster there. And... If he didn't chip, he had a nice hole there. Maybe he could have got the first down, but ultimately falling to the turf monster there and forcing the Allegheny offense to punt. Dion Parker, the punt returner now for the Bison, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Punt there from Brinsick towards his own sideline. That's going to take a favorable Bison bounce and then ultimately be stopped at the 36-yard line. So that's where Bethany's offense will take over. Coach Rance bringing the offense in briefly before sending the 11 out onto the field. Just over halfway through the opening quarter here at Donald Field. Has been a battle of field position for the first seven minutes and 35 seconds. Both defenses with an interception. Robinson going to run the read option, pitch it out to Trey Owens on the far side. Owens fighting his way forward, trying to stutter step, and then ultimately being shoved out of bounds for a pickup there of about three. 
from the 38s. They're going to say Owens only gained two on the play. The Bison now lining up four wide. Three to the wide side left. Owens again getting the handoff, cutting to the right side. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage. No gain there for Owens. Jason Reynolds getting credited for the stop. Trey Owens currently second in the PAC with 726 rushing yards entering today's contest, only trailing Ryan Gomes of Westminster with 867. Robinson getting the low snap, dropping back to pass, scrambling, trying to get out of the backfield and cannot, ends up getting brought down by LJ Orbovich. That's his first sack of the season. And again, the punt unit makes their way on for the Bison. Yeah, Allegheny sent the heat on that one, Drew. Sent about five or six Landed Allegheny defenders. And Bethany offensive line just got overwhelmed then resulting in a sack there. Dursey standing now at his own 26. The punter Landon Bailey at his own 16. Line drive punt there from Bailey. Going to bounce and then roll in the direction of Dursey, who's just going to let the Bison punt return team down it. And it's finally going to stop at the Allegheny 27. Yeah, another nice punt there by Landon Bailey. Going to do a nice punt about like 35 yards, did you say, Drew? Approximately. I know it was 44 yards. 44. Bailey entering today with 238 punting yards. Average 34 previously, handing this one off to Worship right back up the middle. Worship down to the 34-yard line. Jermaine Snodgrass bringing it down. Gain of five, second down. Correction, gain of six. Johnson again, handing it off to Worship. Again, stumbling there in the backfield. A loss of three. Now sets up a third and long scenario here for Allegheny. Third and seven. Worship to the right of Johnson. Gators lined up three wide. Johnson going to hit a wide open Levi Swartz on the far sideline. Swartz moving the chains. And nice play there by Jack Johnson and his receiver Levi Swartz there for an easy first down there. It was poor coverage by the Bethany defense. Simple out route there for Swartz. Johnson again going right back to that side. This time the intended receiver was not Levi Swartz. It was William DeChico, sophomore out of Fairview Park, Ohio. Second down, 10. And now on second and 10, Allegheny with two to the wide side right. Handoff goes to Worship, fighting his way forward up the middle, Worship down to the 44-yard line, a gain of three. Snodgrass bringing him down once again. And another third and seven here. We saw Allegheny convert on the last one just three plays ago. And now Dylan, they're right back in this same scenario. Yeah, another third and long here for the Allegheny offense. Hopefully our defense here can get a stop or two and enforce another punt for them. Johnson back to pass, trying to go right back to Swartz and it's picked off by TJ Crowder. Crowder ripping it out of the hands of Swartz, saying, I don't think so. And a Bison pick once again, second of the quarter, and that'll fire up defensive coordinator Dave Arnold as the Bison get prime field position. Yeah, great starting field position here for the Bethany offense. TJ Crowder reading that play like a book, had great coverage there and just jumped the beat the receiver to the, to the ball and got a great interception there for the deep, Bethany defense and setting up great field positions for this offense. Hopefully the offense can take advantage of this gift the defense has given them. It's a short field now for the Bison, setting up shop at the Gator 42. 
Devon McCorder motion from right to left, faking the handoff to Owens, flipping it over the middle. Jacob Munoz, first down and more, down inside the Allegheny 25. Gonna be brought down at the 23. More than enough to move the chains, a pickup of 19. Yeah, great pass of Marquise Robinson hitting his receiver. Jacob Munoz there for more than enough for another Bethany Bison first down. And Drew, if you're the Bethany offense, you gotta like what you're seeing so far this drive. Picking up some nice bit of yardage. Handoff goes to Owens, makes one man miss. Brought down by the second, getting back to the original line of scrimmage. It was Zach Williams being credited with that stop and no gain there for Owens. 3-10 to go here in the opening quarter. No score yet, but the Bison knocking on the door. Low snap, Robinson fields cleanly, hands it off to Owens. First down and more for Owens, running right up the gut. Trey Owens down inside the 10, and it's going to be first and goal for the Bison. First and goal at the nine now for Bethany. Robinson going right back to Owens. Stutter step. Owens trying to drive his way forward. And then forward progress going to be halted at the three-yard line. Yeah, great. Back-to-back -back great run for Trey Owens there. Hopefully you can get this next one in there and get a touchdown. Handoff goes to Owens. And Owens coughs up the football. Still loose. We see Marquise Robinson. Diving down in front of the Gators, and Robinson fortunately falls on it. Yeah, they was playing hot potato with that football. Ultimately, Robinson thankfully fell on it. It'll be third and goal now for the best in the offense. Rare sight to see there with Trey Owens coughing up the football. We saw a little bit of up-tempo, no-huddle style offense from the Bison on that drive, and then now... Marquise Robinson going to slow things down inside two minutes of the first quarter. Bison lined up three wide. Fake the handoff, flipping it into Munoz. Tight coverage there. Jathan Reynolds in on the coverage. The pass will fall incomplete. And now the field goal unit makes their way on for Bethany. Yeah, that was great. Great coverage there by the corner there for Allegheny. Force, force a nice pass break up there and forcing the Bethany offense to get their field goal unit onto the field. It'll be a 22-yard field goal for John McArdle. Seven for 11 so far this season on field goals. And McArdle's kick up and good as Elijah Hernandez quickly had to corral that wide snap and puts it down in plenty of time for McArdle to split the uprights. One forty-two to go in the opening quarter. Bethany three, Allegheny zero. Yeah, we got three points from that drew out the TJ Crowder interception. Thankfully, we came away with some points here. Absolutely, that was crucial there for the Bison to at least get some points on the drive. The offense probably a little disappointed that they couldn't punch it in for six and send McArdle out for a PAT, but will gladly take what they can get. Now we'll see the kick return team on once again for the Gators. Deep man number 84, Marcus Harrell. Harrell and Swartz, the return men for Allegheny. Kick there from McArdle. Going to be fielded at the 8-yard line by Swartz. Running right up the middle, making one man miss. Second one to no avail. And Swartz going to be brought down at the 26-yard line. And that's where Jack Johnson and company will set up. Trey Young bringing down Swartz there. I've already seen Jack Johnson throw two picks here. In the opening quarter, came in to this contest 
with a touchdown to interception ratio of 9 to 11, now currently sitting at 9 to 13. Dursey going in motion, pitch to him on the end around. Dursey trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, and TJ Crowder in on the stop once again. Snodgrass also helping to bring down Dursey. Under a minute to go now in the opening quarter. Allegheny taking their time. Play clock down to seven. Handoff goes to Worship, fighting his way forward, making one man miss, and then being tripped up at the 37 yard line. Brought down by a herd of bison. It's third down. set up a third and four here for Allegheny. What could quite possibly be the last play of the quarter. Multiple men in motion. Now for the Gators, moving from left to right. Johnson getting the snap, handing it off to Worship, fighting his way, trying to cut inside. Jordan Aldridge making the original contact and then ultimately being stuffed short. Marion Williams in there. Along with Aldridge, and the clock winds down. 15 minutes in the books, 45 to go. Bethany three, Allegheny zero. Dylan, your thoughts on that opening quarter? Yeah, first quarter, both offenses seem to have some trouble with turning the ball over. But Bethany defense here has been very surprising as of late, forcing two turnovers. Got a couple of sacks, a couple of tackles for losses. But Bethany defense keeps playing like this. They, they could sure neck it win this game. Absolutely, this is a rare sight to see, in all honesty, from the Bethany defense who came into this contest 10th in the PAC, conceding an average of 228.5 yards per game and have kept Allegheny's offense in check. A pair of interceptions from Isaiah Thomas along with TJ Crowder. Must be something in the air here this afternoon for the boys from Columbus. As it was Thomas with the first INT and then Crowder with the second one. As for Allegheny, Shane Cafardi with the interception for the Gators defense. That was his second of the season as well. And now we see Allegheny's punt team make their way on the field, led by their punter in Trevor Brinsick, sophomore out of Export, Pennsylvania, Dion Parker, the lone return man. Parker standing at his own 35, Brinsick at his own 20. The punt is blocked, and that one's gonna roll towards the end zone. Still loose, the Bison fall on it inside the 10. That's gonna be Noah Gill picking up that loose football. First and goal from the six for the Bison. Yeah, what a great play by the Bethany defense there blocking that punt and getting a great field position about the six yard line there, Drew. Put it, another great gift the def Bethany defense has given the offense here today. On the block, number 28, Sonny Fox. Sonny Fox getting credited for the block, the sophomore out of Barberton, Ohio. And now we're gonna see a little bit of a wildcat formation here for the Bison. Owens directly getting the snap, getting a block from Jaheim Hodo, trying to fight his way forward. Gonna be stopped at the five yard line for a gain of one. And now for second and goal, Marquise Robinson gonna make his way back on the field. Tackled by Malcolm Dunamy. Assist by Peyton Kelly. Second Malcolm Denomi getting in there for Allegheny on the stop. 
Second and goal from the five. McCorder in motion. From right to left, handoff goes to Owen. Stutter step being dragged down at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Going to be brought down by Zach Altenbaugh. Junior out of Industry, Pennsylvania. And now an injured bison. Altenbaugh with his 16th tackle of the season. Injured Bison, believe it is Jaylene Thompson. This Bethany offensive line has had quite a few injuries so far this season. Sure, this is something that Coach Robinson was hoping to not have to experience today. And thankfully he's able to walk up, get off the field on his own power, thankfully. Always a great sign to see there. Thompson will head over to the training table. We see Aaron Baird move from left tackle to right tackle. Tyler Pierce in at left tackle. Third and goal from the five here for the Bison. 13.50 to go in the first half. Robinson going to float one up, trying to bring it in as Munoz, and a late flag coming in as Tejon Geis was in on coverage. That is probably going to be defensive holding. Holding, pass interference. It's going to be a new set of downs for the Bison regardless. Yeah, you'd love to see it too. Now we get Tony Lascola just having a confirmation here with our referee crew. It goes down as pass interference against Geis. So now first and goal at the two here for Bethany. Looking to make this a two-score game. McCorder in motion from left to right. Robinson the snap, handed off to Owens. Owens cutting to the right side. It's going to be close, but Trey Owens got the ball across. Touchdown, Bison. Yeah, great hard fall run there by Trey Owens. Wouldn't be denied there. Easily getting in for the, another Bethany Bison for touchdown. And there seems to be an injured Bison on the play here. Oh, never mind. He's up. He's fine. Just a little slow to get up there. Possibly yeah, yeah, yeah. got stuck at the bottom of the pile. For Trey Owens, that is now his fifth rushing touchdown of the season for the green and white. John McCardle and company on for the extra point. McCardle on to attempt the extra points. And now we get the official whistle from Tony Lascola. Hold from Hernandez, down good. McArdle's PAT splitting the uprights with 13.39 to play in the first half. 10-0 Bison over the Gators. It has been all green and white here through the opening quarter and change. A little bit of a mic test there from Tony Lascola. The kick return team makes their way on for the Gators. Swartz and Harrell back deep now to receive John McArdle's kick. Loading kick there from McArdle. Fielded at the 16-yard line by Swartz on the far side. Cutting his way up the middle. 
Bison trying to strip the football. It was Dante Bellardo helping to bring him down and finally contained at the 32-yard line. Going to actually spot that ball at the 33 as Swartz with the last second reached there to move the ball an extra yard forward. Three wide here for Allegheny. Doron, the lone setback, gets the handoff. Fights his way up the middle down to the 38-yard line, a gain of five. Tackled by John Henry Rouse. Rouse getting in there for the Bison. Now three wide again. The tight end Stelling there with a pull on the snap. Doron fighting his way forward, going to move the chains. Needed five and got five. And now, Dylan, we're starting to see Allegheny with a bit of a no-huddle offense. Yeah, they're starting to run the no-huddle, and they're running the ball very well the past couple plays here. Doron again fighting his way forward down to the 48-yard line. Pickup of five once again. Yeah, Doron's been out for five yards of carry the last couple six. plays here, Drew. Very much so. Certainly something the Bison are going to want to change as Doron gets the handoff. One more time, this one going to come down to the spot and it appears Doron the length of a football away from moving the chains. You gotta imagine here they're gonna get right back on the ground to Doron again. Yep, Doron getting it, almost stopped shy of the first but then able to move the sticks. And now we're gonna see Doron check out here in favor of Trey Worship. It's running game for the Allegheny Gators. They're starting to heat up now. A lot of motion from the Bison defense. And now a flag coming in on the far side. It's going to be a false start against Allegheny. It's number five. Five penalty. penalty going against one of the Gator receivers, Austin Ferguson. Rare sight to see the wide receiver jump off sides. And start his motion too soon, but nonetheless, five yard penalty there against the Gators brings up first and 15. Brinsick in at quarterback, trying to float that one on the far side to his target, Declan O'Brien. Brinsick going to continue running the Allegheny offense. 243 passing yards on the season. Handoff goes to Worship. Up the gut, Worship. Second effort, trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage for a gain of four. Rondell Lewis in there for Bethany. Now they're third and long here for the Allegheny Gators today, Drew. They've been backed up on third and long the past couple drives here, Drew. Absolutely. It's made life much more difficult than it needs to be for them as well. Fake the handoff, does Brinsick. Firing that one wide open over the middle is Declan O'Brien, and he walks into the end zone for a touchdown. 47-yard strike from Brinsick to O'Brien. And Allegheny making this a one-score game in the blink of an eye. Yeah, Jack Johnson realized that coverage there on the secondary hit his receiver Declan O'Brien for an easy touchdown. O'Brien burned his safety of the corner that was guarding him and walks in for an easy Allegheny touchdown there. I hate to see it because the best in defense has been playing great all mm -hmm. so, like oh, great so far this entire game and that play best in defense would want that one back. Garrett Paxton the kicker drilling that PAT makes it 10-7 Bison with 10.50 to go in the first half 
Second touchdown pass of the season there for Trevor Brinsick. Also, best of luck to the Bethany College volleyball and men's soccer teams. They're competing for PAC championships later on today. And Dylan, now you're going to want to see this Bethany offense respond with some sort of points. Yeah, I would love to see the Bethany offense respond here in some sort of points. And I think, I mean, the, the last drive, it looked pretty good offensively. And hopefully we can come back and respond here quick. Paxton leading the kicking team on.
Now the Bison are trailing 13-10, pending the PAT. Paxton's PAT good. up good. and good. So now 14-10. Gators over the Bison. A little bit of time for the Bison to respond just before the half. But it's also important to note again, Bethany set to receive the second half kickoff. So as long as the Bison can take enough time off of the clock to prevent Allegheny from driving down the field again, it certainly would not be a scenario where the Bison must score would just be something that they prefer to then get the ball again with the lead. Yeah, it'd be much. It'd be a lot better if Bethany did go down here and score, and they would get the second half kickoff and then score the opening drive there. Kind of keep it a little close, and hopefully we can go down here and score before halftime. Paxton set to kick this one from the left hash mark. Parker and Hodo back Parker deep. For the Bison, line drive, bouncing kick there. Hodo going to field it inside his own end zone. Hodo making a pair of Gators miss. And then Hodo going to be brought down just beyond the 20-yard line. And maybe for Hodo there probably should have just let that one just go into the end zone for a touchback. But four yards short of a touchback, but it's okay. And see, that was kind of my thought process as well, was to let for Hodo to let that one bounce into the end zone. The only thing there you could argue in a split-second decision would be Hodo didn't necessarily know which way the ball was going to bounce. Yeah. But Bison now, first and 10 at their own 21. Robinson dropping back to pass, finds a wide-open Tim Mickens fighting his way down to the 36-yard line, a pickup of 15. As Mickens extends his right hand and signals for a first down. Yeah, great catch there by Tim Mickens. Getting more than enough for another Bison first down here. His offense starting to drive early on with 3.14 left in the first half. Kima say motion from right to left as the tight end. Handoff goes to Owens and the play blown dead as Rich Nagy signaled for a timeout before the ball was snapped. First timeout called by either coach here in the half. The clock will stop with 3.06 on the scoreboard. Coach Nakey possibly not liking the personnel that he had out on the field. Recognizing that the Bison were going to run. Allegheny quickly makes their way back out. Bison offense following just a split second later. Robinson continuing to operate out of the shotgun. Three wide, two to the wide side right. Handoff goes back to Owens. Owens just shy of the 40-yard line at the 39. Pick up there of three yards. Nigel Williams bringing down Trey Owens. And unfortunately for Trey Owens, ran into the largest body on the Allegheny defense, Nigel Williams standing in at 6'3", 350 pounds. Oh my gosh, it's a big boy. Robinson getting the snap, back to Owens. Owens this time over the 40 yard line, down to the 42, another three yard gain. Carries up to the 43. Allegheny calling their second timeout of the half. I'm going to try and hopefully get a stop here on third down and 
get some time left to get that maybe get another touchdown or some a field goal in this next drive for the Allegheny. Absolutely, Coach Nagy wanting to try and preserve as much time on the clock as possible. Right now, two eighteen on the clock. You would assume that if Allegheny forces a stop here, Coach Nagy would call his third and final timeout to really provide as much time as possible for his offense. A punt then from Landon Bailey. Probably give them roughly two minutes to drive down the field so we would see the two-minute offense in full effect for the Gators. What do you think the offense is going to do here, Drew? Because if they run it, they can burn, waste their timeout. And if they pass it here and they incomplete it, the clock stops, and they'll still have that timeout in their back pocket for Allegheny. I would think the Bison are going to try and be a bit aggressive here, push for that first down marker through the air. Yeah, they line so up four well. wide. Robinson play action, pass floating, one over the middle, finds a wide open Devon McCorder. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Bison! Devon McCorder receiving that pass from Marquise Robinson, 57 yards to the house, and the Bison are back on top. You love to see it, them being aggressive here, Drew. Great pass there by Marquise Robinson, recognizing the man coverage there against Devon McCorder, and he just toasting his man for a 57-yard touchdown. You love to see it. That's exactly what the doctor ordered for the Bison. And John McCardle on to complete the point after attempt. McCardle's PAT up and good with 2.09 to go before the half. Bethany 17, Allegheny 14. Devon McCorder for the Bison. Now his sixth receiving touchdown of the season. Marquise Robinson's favorite target coming up in the clutch for the green and white. Yeah, if you're Allegheny here, you have 2.09 left and one timeout left. Hopefully, they can hopefully go down here and get some points on the board before halftime. Bison defense is going to need to stand strong in that regard. Knowing that Allegheny is going to be throwing the kitchen sink at the Bison defense with Bethany getting the ball to start the second half. McCarter will kick off. Marcus Harrell and Levi Swartz back deep. Harrell and Swartz, the return men for the Gators, both standing inside their own five-yard line. Short kick there from McCardle. Going to be fair caught by Hunter Lohr at the 25-yard line. Going to spot it a few yards back. Rather right on the 25. I believe the... Officials giving him the benefit of the doubt with the fair catch being called for at the 25, but he did take a few steps back, did Hunter Lohr. Johnson dropping back to pass, finding his target over the middle, Stelling. The ball ends up being tipped and, and then blown dead. I think he caught that. He caught him. He didn't make a football move after. And I say that is a fumble. It was stripped and then ultimately recovered by Waukee Lawton. That one, certainly a bang-bang play. Unfortunately, we don't have the benefit of instant replay. And a big break there for Allegheny as Worship gets the handoff, fights his way Worship up the gut. Here. Down to the 29 yard line. Yeah. 
Rouse leads the charge, second down following the timeouts. And then Coach Robinson calling a timeout with a minute 56 to go in the first half. And Dylan, we're going to see Coach Robinson try to do the same thing that we saw Allegheny do last possession, calling a timeout just before third down, try and get the offense back out on the field. Yeah, I love, love the aggressiveness of Coach Robinson here. He wants the offense to get another drive here before halftime and maybe put some more points up on the board. Well, now a third and six for the Gators who line up four wide. Worship to the right of Johnson. Dropping back to pass, dealing with pressure. His he throws. Screen pass to Worship out of the backfield. Huge pickup there, Worship. Down to midfield, pickup of 22 yards. Trey Worship picking up a significant gain. And now Allegheny in the hurry up offense. Johnson dropping back to pass again, floating this one up over the top, off the hands of Dadrick Vickers, who couldn't quite pull that one in. Yeah, Vickers almost intercepted that one, Drew. That would have been huge if we would have got that pick. Dadrick Vickers will certainly be winning that one back. As he knows, that could have been a difference maker here before the half ends. Bethany now 95 seconds away from going into the break with the lead. Worship sent from the left side to the right of Jack Johnson. Gets the snap, dropping back. Aldridge delivering a hit. And Dadrick Vickers again, breaking it up. Yeah, Jack Johnson really cut the pressure there. He got hit late there by Jordan Aldridge, the defensive end. Debovic, the intended receiver there for the Gators. Third and 10 here for Allegheny. Bison sideline trying to fire up the crowd. Just quite full of Allegheny blue and gold. Johnson faking the handoff, firing one over the middle of the field. Closest man to it was Declan O'Brien. As the pass falls incomplete, sets up fourth and long for the Gators. And it seems like Rather, the Gators now sending the punt unit on. Allegheny just wanting to deceive the Bison sideline into possibly thinking they were going to go for it. As Brinsick and company make their way on the field. Dion Parker, the return man at his own 15. Bouncing snap into the hands of Brinsick, just getting it away. Parker... Thought about a fair catch, but instead lets it bounce. And it's going to be downed at the 21-yard line. You know, the Bethany offense here have a minute 18 left to maybe go down there and get some points off this drive, Drew. Bethany might be enacting the two-minute offense of their own. They still have two timeouts, two left in the half. It's a great point. They can stop the clock twice without having to hurry up and spike it. Quite a long field, but certainly not out of the question entirely. Four wide are the Bison. Hand off to Owens up the middle. Owens down to the 27. A pickup there of six. The clock continuing to run. Now a minute to go in the half. Robinson going to hand it off to Owens again. Tries to make a stutter step and then forward progress going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. So it appears as if Bethany just going to opt to see out the final minute and change that they were given on the scoreboard. Tight end Kimisei checking in. Provide a little bit of extra protection.
Third and four now for the Bison. Robinson will give it to Owens one more time. Going to be very close to the first down marker, but he does just enough to move the chains. As soon as the officiating crew gets set up, we're going to have possibly one final play, if that. Five seconds left. Yeah, that's yep. going to be the end of the half there. Yep, Bethany just going to see out the final 15 seconds and go into the break with a three-point lead. Halfway home in the last game of the season here at Donald Field. Bison ahead of the Gators, 17-14. We'll step aside here on the PAC Digital Network. Coverage of the second half coming up after the break.
And we're back here at Don Outfield for coverage of the second half. PAC football. The Bison ahead of the Gators, 17-14 at the break. They run through some halftime stats. Both teams with nine first downs through the first 30 minutes of play. Allegheny ahead of Bethany, 107 to 60 as far as total rushing yards. The Gators with a slight edge, 119 to 110 as far as passing yards. Your time of possession. Difference of 30 seconds, Allegheny with 15-15. The Bison with 14-45. Allegheny 6 of 12 on third downs. Bethany 4 of 9. So Dylan, pretty much dead even here between these two teams. And the scoreboard generally reflects that. Yeah, pretty much. Both offense have been able to do some stuff. Defense have both been playing good. It's a real close game. Like only, like you said, only 30 seconds between time and possession for both teams. And the only difference is Bethany, when they get in the red zone, they're two for two. Bethany and Allegheny, zero for zero. So that's it. And the penalties, too. There's not many penalties. There's only four penalties in total in 26 yards. Yeah, and three of those penalties going against Allegheny. So a very disciplined Bison team yeah. through the first 30 minutes. That's something that has really hurt Bethany a lot here at home, especially is the large number of penalty yards that they've conceded. But there's still a second half to go, though, so I don't know. We might see. The refs might want to earn their paycheck this week and uh, start throwing some more flags. I mean, let's be real here. They're getting their paychecks regardless of oh, how many yeah, flags they throw. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't really been doing much, man. Let's just sow some play. But, yeah, some notable game performances. John E. and Duran, 10 carries for 64 yards, averaging 6.4 6 yards a carry, which is phenomenal for a running back. Trey, Trey Owens is getting 17 carries for 73 yards and a touchdown, for, and he's averaging about 4.3 yards a carry. Devon McCorder has two catches for 73 yards and a touchdown. The biggest catch being 58-yard reception he had just before halftime. And receiving for Allegheny, Declan O'Brien has two catches for 77 yards and a touchdown as well. Booming kick there from Paxton to get the second half underway. It's going to bounce at the Bison 5, finally picked up by Hodo at the 6. And he's going to be shoved out of bounds just shy of the 15, so... Al Allegheny's kickoff team forcing the Bison to now have a long field to yeah, start the second half. Not a great field position for the Bethany offense here, Drew. Not even getting into the 15. So it's going to be a nice long drive here, hopefully. And you mentioned the, the stats as far as the running backs go. Trey Owens averaging 4.3 yards per carry is a very solid number. And then, like you said, you flip to Allegheny and you have John Ian Doron averaging 6.4 I mean you have two talented very talented running backs here in this matchup yeah, I didn't even mention Trey Warship they're starting running back he has 15 carries for 43 and it's only averaging two and a half yards to carry Trey Owens there picking up two yards there for the Bison Elker Connolly getting in there for Allegheny this Allegheny run defense has been pretty good so far. I mean, Owens is going to get his yards regardless, but Jim Hodo has three carries only for nine yards. So Allegheny's run defense has shown, shown up today so far. Four wide are the Bison. Hodo lined up now to the right of Robinson. Hodo gets the handoff, and Hodo going to get a yard there. Make it a third and six now for the Bison. Again, number Chris Rubino. Rubino bringing him down. Third down and five. Rubino, the junior out of Manaka, Pennsylvania. 6'1", 285 pounds. As we mentioned, the Bison, four for nine on third downs through the first 30 minutes, getting their first crack at it. Here in the second half, Robinson dropping back to pass, floating one out to Munoz. First down and more, make it five for 10 for the Bethany offense on third down. Good right there by Munoz, running a little, nice little comeback right there. Knew where the first down marker was at and got, just passed it and got another Bethany Bison first down. Jacob Munoz has been quite busy here in this matchup for the Bison going against 
Tejon Geis all day. McCorder in motion from right to left. Pitch out to Owens. Owens barreling his way back over the line of scrimmage, gaining something positive there. About a yard and a half. It was kind of lay on the QB pitch there by Robinson. And Owens got turned nothing into something. Second down nine. They're going to spot just a gain of a yard there for Owens. So a second and nine. Three receivers to the left. Robinson faking the handoff. Floating one up just beyond the reach of Dion Parker. Had Parker been able to haul that one in. He had to split the safeties and been into the house for six. Yeah, Robinson wish he had that one back. Just overthrew Parker just by a couple of yards. Now we're facing another third and nine here for the Bethany offense. Robinson going to take his time and get the play call from the sideline. 12.43 to go in the third. Three wide are the Bison. Munoz, the lone man on the right. Play clock down to five. Robinson gets the snap, fakes the handoff. Going to float one up for, in the direction of Tim Mickens. That pass intercepted by David Babb. And he's going to be brought down inside the 30-yard line. A nightmare start for, in the second half for the Bison offense. Yeah. What a play by David Babb, the free safety out of Pembroke Pines, Florida. Read that play like a book. Saw Robinson's eyes to the receiver and just jumped that route before the receiver could even get a hand on it. Great play, great start. They're going to have a great starting field position here for the Allegheny offense here. Absolutely. Like you said, Dylan, just jumping the route to perfection in front of Tim Mickens. And that is a costly play there. And now Jack Johnson and company taking over at the 30. Handoff goes to Warship up the middle. Going to fight his way forward down to the 25. Pick up a five there as Sean Wheeler brought him down in the process. Handoff goes to Worship once again. Worship going to fight his way forward ever so close to the chains. Pick up there of three to bring up a third and two. John Henry Rouse credited with the stop. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised there if Allegheny keeps on the ground with Worship here. We're on third and two here. Run game has certainly worked much better than the pass. Handoff goes to Worship. Back up the middle, first down and more. Worship getting down inside the 20 to the 18. And that'll move the chains. A nice run there by Worship, getting more than enough for the Allegheny first down there. Getting a new set of down for the Allegheny Gators offense. Motion from the Gators tight end. Handoff goes to Worship. Brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10, it was Trey Adams. Slight motioned, slightly motioned to his right. Clock continuing to wind here in the third quarter. Four minutes gone. Johnson handing off to Worship once again. Huge hole on the left side. Going to be brought down by Sean Wheeler, but not before Worship is down inside the 10-yard line. Ball going to be spotted at the 7-yard line. Yeah, great run there by Trey Worship. Saw the hole and hit it and carried a couple of Bethany Bison defenders with him to get, get more than enough for a, a first down. And Drew, it seems like Allegheny's trying to get Worship much more involved here than he was in the first half. Absolutely. Primarily John Ian Doron. Handoff going to Worship once again. Met by a trio of Bison. Jordan Aldridge, T. Fofang, and Jermaine Snodgrass all in there. It's been all Trey Worship this, this drive, Drew. He's gotten the ball every single play so far. And now they're going to go to John Ian Doron. Of course, with as much as Worship ran the ball that drive, just had to check out briefly. Get a little breather. Handoff goes to Doron, trying to run it right up the middle. Snodgrass bringing him down. Down inside the five, going to spot that at the four. So it'll set up third and goal now for the Gators. 
Bison going to need a big stop here. Allegheny lines up four wide. Dursey goes in motion from left to right. Three to the wide side right now. Johnson going to float one up for Declan O'Brien. Tipped away by Dadrick Vickers. Yeah, kind of surprised Jack Johnson threw that ball up there, especially when Dadrick Vickers just smothered that receiver over there. And Allegheny's bringing in the field goal unit to try and tie this game up. You certainly like the aggression there from Jack Johnson, but like you said, Dadrick Vickers in great coverage, not necessarily even a big height difference between O'Brien and Vickers as Paxton's field goal right down Main Street from 21 yards out. Tied at 17 now with 9.25 to go in the third. Yeah, if you're the Bethany offense, you're getting a sigh of relief here after the interception. Thankfully, they didn't get a touchdown there and only, only get holding them to three points there. Hopefully, the offense can come back out and respond here and not turn the ball over. Absolutely, the Bison needing to continue to protect the football. Both teams with three points off of turnovers. The Bison got three in the first half when Isaiah Thomas hauled in his interception of the game, third of the season. And then Allegheny just there getting three off the foot of Paxton. Parker and Hodo set to receive the kick for Bethany. Booming kick from Paxton. Hodo going to field this one inside the five. Tiptoe the sideline to make sure he stays in. Cuts back inside. Still on his feet. Jaheim Hodo. Wide open hole. Cutting to the left side. Tripped up by the kicker, Paxton. Who says kickers can't make tackles? <laughs> yeah, what a great tackle there by that kicker. What an even better return there by Jaheim Hodo. Getting it out to about the 40, maybe the 39 yard line. Yeah, they're going to spot him at the 39. That's a good field position for the offense here, Drew. Very much so. 34-yard kick return there for Jaheim Hodo. As I mentioned, picked it up at the 5. Got out to the 39. It was one player away from taking in 95 yards to the end zone. And unfortunately for the Bison, Garrett Paxton delivered a pretty solid hit. Play action pass from Robinson goes to Devon McCorder. First down and more for McCorder. Well over midfield down to the Gator 46. Robinson finds his favorite receiver, McCorder, there again. For more than enough for Bison, Bethany Bison on first down. McCorder's been having a pretty good game so far here, Drew. Three catches for about... 80, 80-something 80 yards receiving. Very much so. Robinson handing this one off to Trey Owens, running it to the left side. Owens barreling over the 40-yard line. The I'd have to imagine this one's going to be coming back. Yeah, I'd imagine it'd be probably a holding call. It is a holding call. Penalty against the Bison. The call is holding against Bethany, 10 yards from the spot. It'll be first down at 18. Looks like the, the Bison 46. head referee is having some mic issues. Yeah, microphone not quite working here today. So all we know is a holding penalty against the Bison sets up now first and 18. Robinson going to hand this one off to Owens, trying to get back as close to midfield as he can, down to the 49. Pick up there of about four. You mentioned Devon McCorder, three receptions for 88 yards here so far today, including the 58-yard touchdown pass as Robinson floats one out to the near side. Tim Mickens unable to bring that one in. Set up now a third and 15 with 8.05 to go in quarter number three. Yeah, nice route run there by Mickens. Just, just could not reel that one in, and Mickens was hoping he'd hit that one back. Tim Mickens, the hybrid receiver tight end, depending upon the week, can line up in either slot for the Bison. Just trying to get the most out of the sizable wide receiver. 6'2", 211 pounds as Robinson will hand this one off 
to Owens, trying to just pick up as much as he can, getting back in front of the original line of scrimmage. A gain there of about seven. Gonna set up fourth and eight as Rabino brought him down and Bethany's punt unit comes on here. Back to punt for the Bison. Number 82, Landon Bailey. Allen Another Hayes, disappointing two, drive for the Bison Hersey, here in the Hayes. second half. The offense so far is like stale on offense here. Hopefully, Coach Robinson get that offense clicking again very soon. Allegheny trying to capitalize here as Bailey booms this punt. Dursey going to call for the fair catch and takes a favorable bounce, then rolling out beyond the 20 yard line. Going to be down at about the 23. And that's where the Gator offense will take over. Just as I suspected, Trevor Brinsick in at quarterback for Allegheny. Allegheny making a QB switch here, huh? Seems like they quite often run the two quarterback system as this handoff goes to John Ian Doron. Up the middle, pick up there of about one. John Ian Doron. And you know the saying, if you have two QBs, you have no QB. John Henry Ross has remained Snodgrass on the stop. And certainly a quarterback by committee. If you will. 16, so they're going to give Doron two there. Fake the handoff to Doron. Brinsick going to float this one up. And it's going to be hauled in on the far sideline. A tremendous grab by Ian Dursey. Huge pickup there for the Gators. A gain there of about 31. Now Allegheny continuing to run. Bit of an up-tempo offense. Handoff goes to Doron this time. Left side fighting his way up the middle. Down to the 41. A pickup there of three yards for John Ian Doron. Romello Bush and Wheeler bringing down Doron that time. Brinsick the snap, handoff to Doron, up the gut. Doron going to be tripped up at about the 38-yard line. Another three-yard gain, under six to go in quarter number three. Spot the ball three yards away from the first down marker. Motion here for Sean Stelling, the tight end. Handoff goes to Doron. Doron tripped up from behind by Aldridge and then shoved backwards. And a huge stop for the Bison defense. But the job may not be done yet. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Allegheny offense stays out here on the field and attempts to go for it here. So far, it looks like that's what the Allegheny offense is going to do. Yep, Brinsick got the play call. Of course, it's hard to tell sometimes because Brinsick's also their punter. Yeah. And now setting up a fourth and four. A loss of one there for Doron. Brinsick gets the snap, fakes the handoff, floats one, trying to find O'Brien, got pulled down by the turf monster, tripping over his own route. And a turnover on downs gives the ball back to the Bison. Yeah, Brinson kind of threw the one behind his receiver there. And then, like you said, Brinson tripped over the turf monster there. And Bethany defense really needed that. And Bethany offense come back onto the field. Hopefully they can get some points on the board because the past two drives really haven't been able to do much of anything compared to what we've seen in the first half. Bison offense searching for their second half spark. With 4.55 to go in quarter number three. Owens motioned to the right now of Marquise Robinson. McCorder in motion from the slot. Handoff goes to Owens, cutting to the left side. Huge hole for Owens, fighting his way upfield. Owens going to be brought down at the 46-yard line, but a flag back behind the play. And it's going to be a hold against the Bison. More than likely, Tim Mickens, judging by his reaction, yeah, Trey Owens, you can see on the field, is kind of irritated, it looks like. I mean, if I was Trey Owens, I would be quite irritated, too. 
Just had a great run there and is getting called back. And then to make matters worse for Trey Owens, he has to check out of the game, at least for this play. Had a quick word with Coach Robinson as he made his way to the sidelines. Probably trying to figure out why he was being taken out. Robinson dropping back to pass, going to step up into the pocket, keeping himself. Robinson getting back to the original line of scrimmage, still on his feet. And Robinson finally going to be brought down by several Gators at the 45. A great run there by Marquise Robinson. Felt the pressure, made a dude miss in the backfield, and just took off and got picked up a good chunk of yardage there. 17 yards. Yeah, more close enough to the first down marker there, picking up that all the yards they got from the holding call back. Four wide of the Bison, three to the wide side right. Play action pass. Robinson going to try and float that one to Mickens on the near side. Too far towards the sideline, and it falls incomplete. At third and three here for the Bison, you probably expect the Trey Owens run here, Drew. Certainly could see that in the picture. I mean, you've got one of the best running backs in the conference. This is certainly the time to use him, but Bethany... Lining up four wide, possible draw scenario. And that's exactly what it is. Draw up the middle to Owens, gets tripped up after a gain of one. Hit at the line by number 99, Chris and the punt unit makes their way on for Bethany. Another disappointing drive for the Bison. Three straight drives, he's been able to really do much of nothing here. And they will be punting for the third time this half. Offensive coordinator Josh Rance very much frustrated by the lack of execution there and now having a conversation with Marquise Robinson as Landon Bailey is on to punt. Bailey's punt there towards the Allegheny sideline. Dursey just going to let that one continue to roll and solid field position as that one going to be downed inside the 10-yard line at the 9. Dylan, it may have taken all season, but it seems like finally the Bison have found themselves a punter in Landon Bailey. Yeah, Landon Bailey has looked good so far today. I mean, he was our punter before. Trey, was, Dean, right? Trey Dean punted, was punter by committee, essentially. You know what I mean? It seemed There's like... punter every game. It's yes. Like, yeah, it looks like Landon Bailey has found himself a starting job, and he's played phenomenal so far today. Handoff for Jack Johnson, back in at quarterback. Going up the middle to, to worship. A gain there of about two. Snodgrass. Snodgrass bringing down worship there in the process. So now a second and seven, 2.43 to go in quarter number three. Contest tied at 17 apiece. Johnson's pass floated to the far sideline into the hands of William DeChico the third. Going to be shoved out of bounds just shy of the first down marker. Down by set up a third and two. Johnson the snap, handoff goes to Worship, trying to go right back up the middle. Worship going to be ever so close to the marker. And this one going to really depend on the spot. And it's an injury timeout as the Gators had an offensive lineman down on the field. Snodgrass getting credited for the stop. And the chains are going to be coming out onto the field. That's how close this one is. Seth Jones was the injured Allegheny Gator who walked off under his own power. Shorts. And Allegheny short of the first down by the nose of the football. 
Yeah, in Allegheny, I think <clears throat> it's real close. I think they might stay on the field and go for it. Possibly. Inside oh. their own 20? Wait a second. Oh. They, yeah. they just moved the ball up? Yeah, I think it feels like they just moved the ball up. I think they're saying it's a first down for Allegheny. It's oh. Nope. Fourth down it is, even with the slight move up. Rather surprising that Allegheny's staying out here. Fourth and one at their own 19-yard line. Could we maybe get the Bethany defense to jump off sides, maybe take a false start and back up a little bit so they can punt. And now timeout from yep. Coach Nagy. Try to get the Bison to jump on defense, and they were not falling for it at all. And it looks like the Allegheny punt team will probably come onto the field. Final score, Geneva defeats Teal. 57 Coach Robinson going to talk this one over with his punt return unit and also the defense. As he mentioned now, Coach Nagy just going to send the punt unit out after not getting the Bison defense to jump. And Dylan, I wouldn't be surprised if three, four weeks ago we wouldn't have seen the Bison jump there. Yeah, but it was a couple of weeks ago. It missed definitely the Bison with a jump, but now there's a much more discipline now here in the later ladder of the schedule here. And it indeed looks like Allegheny will punt. It'll be Brent Sick, the punter, standing at his own six-yard line. Parker, the return man, standing at his own 47. Booming punt there from Brinsick. Parker going to call for a fair catch at the 46. And solid field position for the Bison. Hey, great field position for the Bison here. Great job by the Bethany defense forcing a three and out there. And hopefully for job number four here for the Bethany offense, we can get something going. 158 to go in quarter number three. Neither side has really got much going offensively in the second half. Allegheny, the lone score with a 21-yard field goal off the left foot of Garrett Paxton. <clears throat> Robinson getting the snap, handing off to Trey Owens, up the gut. Owens going to get directly oh, to midfield. Pick up there of four yards. Tackled by Maxwell Hammond. Maxwell Hammond bringing him down in the process. Bison now three receivers to the wide side left. Play action pass. Robinson's pass tipped up into the air, and it gets picked off. And then he brought down at the 40-yard line. That was David Babb who came away with the INT. That's his second interception of the game, third of the season. And now Allegheny in more field position. I think he's the second this quarter, Drew. Yes. Yeah, the second this quarter. Yeah, and the defense, the ball gets tipped in the air. Nine times out of ten, that ball is getting picked most of the time. So, again, the Bethany offense still cannot do nothing on offense. And it's very disappointing based on the performance we saw in the first half from the offense. And also disappointing from the defensive perspective because they're keeping the Gators offense in check. It's like Bethany's been doing all year. The offense can't do much and the defense is out there most of the game. The defense gets tired and can't do much. Doron there getting down to the 37-yard line. A pickup of two. But yeah, as you mentioned, Dylan, it's Bethany defense consistently out on the field much more often than their offensive counterparts. And that's in part why Bethany has given up so many points and scored very few. Hand off to Doron again. Again, this time up the middle over the 35, down to the 33, pick up a four. Leading the charge, Sean Wheeler. There's an injured bison down on the field. Another injured bison, the third one that has gone down here today. Certainly not a great sign. That's Robert Warren, junior defensive tackle out of Dallas, Texas. And the clock stops with 40 seconds exactly remaining in quarter number three. And 
as Robert Warren gets set to receive some treatment on the field. Coach Robinson out there checking on him as well. And now Warren going to be helped to his feet. Going to be escorted off the field. Gingerly putting weight on his left foot. Hopefully Robert Warren will be all right. I mean, even though he's being helped off, always a strong sign to see he's able to walk off as well. Yeah, much so. And now sets up third and four. The clock starting to run on the whistle. Johnson in the shotgun. Three receivers wide for the Gators. Doron lined up directly to the right of Johnson. As Allegheny continues to wind this clock down. I wasn't with the play clock at all was going at all either. It's stuck at 40. No, and the game clock just continuing to wind. Yeah, I guess that will, guess will be the end of the quarter. I mean, yeah, Johnson so just going to let it go. I mean, if you think about it, though, when the clock was stopped, it was at 40 seconds because of the yeah. injury. So then you would have thought, as you said, the game clock, the play clock, rather, would have started at 25 when our referee, Tony Lascola, blew his whistle. And instead, Allegheny just able to run off the final 34 seconds. Yeah, a bit of confusion here to end. The third quarter, hopefully the game clock and everything, the play clock more or less will be fixed, hopefully. Teams will flip sides here for the final 15 minutes. Still knotted up at 17 apiece. And of course, if you are Allegheny, you certainly understand their decision to take advantage of that and just see out the final few seconds. Third and four now to start the fourth quarter. Johnson gonna hand it off to Doron. First down and more for John Ian Doron. Down to the 26 yard line, pickup of seven. Doron just continuing to bulldoze through this Bison defense. Again, Johnson lined up in the shotgun. Handoff goes to Doron, cutting to the left side, brought down by TJ Crowder. Another five yard gain. Down to the 21 that time. Brought down by TJ Crowder. Yeah, Duron continuing where he left off in the first half, averaging about five and a half yards a clip here. And getting the ball right back here, fighting his way towards the first down marker. And it appears as if they're going to rule him just short, third and inches. Yep, Duron up the middle. Yep. yep, that's exactly what it was, and he got the first down inside the 15-yard line, down to about the 13. Trey Warship will make his way back onto the field. The Give Duran a little breather here. I mean, with as much as he's been running the football, certainly would expect that. Yeah, I mean, Bethany defense, run defense has not shown up at all today, it seems like. Duran and Warship are having their way so far. And now it'll be Worship, who would you would imagine sees out the rest of the drive. Handoff goes to Worship, fighting his way ever closer to the 10. Pick up there of about two. In amongst the tacklers, Jermaine Snodgrass. Second down and eight from the 11. Second and eight scenario here. <coughs> For the Gators, 
Line up two receivers to the wide side left. Handoff goes to Worship, cutting to the right side. Worship down inside the 10 now. Another two yard gain. Gonna set up third and six from the nine. Huge stop here would be needed for the Bison to force Allegheny to a field goal. Third and four at the 11. Johnson in the shotgun. Hands it off to Worship. Cutting to the right side. Worship going to be met by several Bison. And it appears as if he's going to be stopped about a yard shy. I wouldn't be surprised if Allegheny went for it here on fourth and one here. By John Henry Rouse. John Henry Rouse getting credited for the stop. And Dylan, it certainly brings up a big decision for Coach Nagy. And the offense is, in fact, going to stay out there. We're going to say fourth and two. If they don't run a player, they might try and force the Bison offside and maybe kick the field goal. But... As it looks like right now, they're going to go for it. Motion here from Salisbury. Hand off to Worship. And he's met immediately. John Henry Rouse with a huge stop. Not only keeping the Gators out of the end zone, but off the scoreboard in general. And the Bison take over on downs. Yeah, questionable call there by Allegheny's offense to go for. Instead of taking the points to put you up in this game, you go for it. And John Henry Rouse was all over Trey Worship in the backfield. Great stop by the Bethany defense here. Now let's hope fifth drive now for the offense can do something. Two of the last four have resulted in turnovers. John Henry Rouse reading worship like a book and coming up with the biggest stop of the game for the Bison and the offense now with a long field to drive. McCorder in motion from left to right. Handoff goes to Owens, cutting to the left side, making one man miss. Fighting his way forward over the 10 yard line, down to the 12. A pickup of five with 11 and a half to go in the fourth. Nice start run there by Owens. Carried a couple of Allegheny Gator defenders with them. Pick up five yards. Second down and five. Trey Owens has been a difference maker for this Bison offense. One score of his own. Handoff going right back to him to the left side. First down and more for Trey Owens trying to get to the next level. Going to be tripped up just beyond the 30-yard line. 18-yard run there for the senior running back out of Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, phenomenal run there by Trey Owens. Nice hole there. Hit the hole. Good blocking all the way around. And... The offense starting to heat up here a little bit, Drew. See the hole, hit the hole, and that's exactly what Trey Owens did. Read option, Robinson keeps it himself, loses a yard or two in the process. Yeah. Yeah, Rubino and Maxwell Hammond were, read that play like a book as well, Drew. Lost, tackling Robinson there for a loss of one. So now a second and 11 for the Bison offense. Robinson getting the play call from the sideline. Three wide as McCorder's in motion. Handoff goes to Owens, fighting his way back up the middle. Rather, that's Jaheim Hodo. Hodo a pickup there of three. Peyton Kelly bringing down Hodo in the process. Big third down here for the Bison. Currently five for 10 in the game. McCorder motion to the left side this time. Robinson dropping back to pass. Plenty of time firing over the middle of the field in and out of the hands of Tim Mickens. Tim Mickens has had a case of the drops today, Drew. He's had, had a couple that he should be catching because he catch and caught them before a couple games ago. And today he just can't seem to catch anything right now. And he's forcing another Bethany punt. Offense again doing absolutely nothing at all in this half. Landon Bailey on to punt. Ian Dursey on to receive 
for the Gators. 9.24 to go in the fourth quarter. Bailey standing at his own 19. Dursey at his own 34. Booming punt there from Bailey. Hauled in by Dursey at the 30 and immediately met by a trio of Bison, including Noah Gill. So the Gator offense will take over at their own 32-yard line. It'll be Jack Johnson leading Allegheny's offense this drive. Wind starting to pick up a little bit. Gators line up three wide. Worship to the left of Johnson. Fakes the handoff. Johnson bootlegs left. Floats this one out to Ferguson on the near sideline. And it's incomplete hitting the turf just before falling into the hands of Austin Ferguson. Worship again to the left of Johnson. Gets the handoff this time up the middle. Pushing his way forward over the 35 down to the 36. A pick up there of four yards for Trey Worship to set up a third and six. Under nine to go now in the fourth. It's a big third down here for Allegheny here. Worship in the shotgun. Two receivers out wide, fakes the handoff. Gonna float this one up over the top. A wide open Declan O'Brien and Jack Johnson overthrows him by about three yards. A huge break as O'Brien got around Thomas and was sprinting down that far sideline wide open. Yeah, miscommunication there between O'Brien and Johnson there. O'Brien burned the corner there and just was overthrown by a little bit. But, like you said, huge relief for the Bethany defense as they force a three and out here. Brinsick on to punt. Parker, the return man for Bethany. Punt there, and Brinsick takes a huge hit. Flag behind the play. Parker fields this one at the 30. Parker going to be brought down at the 40. And now the question becomes, is this running into the kicker yep. or roughing the kicker? It's, it, I think it's going to be running into the kicker. It was on number 44 for Bethany. It's Dante Bellardo. Because if it's running into the kicker, it's only a five-yard penalty, and Allegheny would then have to redo the punt if they chose to accept. If it's roughing the kicker, 15 yards, 15 yards and an automatic down. first down. This is a huge yes. call here. I still wouldn't be surprised if it just like bumping into the kicker for the five yards. I could, I wouldn't be surprised if they won for it. Big decision for Tony Lascola. And it looks like it's yep, fourth and one. It's a five-yard penalty. Running into, kicker, Running into the kicker ends up being the call. It's a huge difference maker there because Dante Bellardo hit. The kicking leg of Brinsick, had he hit the plant leg, it would have been roughing the kicker. Let's watch out again here. They'll try and get the bison the jump here, maybe. Fourth and one now. Bouncing punt there. Brinsick going to get this one away yet again. Parker just going to let this football bounce, and then it goes out of bounds at the, the nine-yard the nine line. Rather the 10. Nice punt there by Allegheny getting at the 10 yard line. Bethany will have another long, bad field position here and hopefully have a nice long drive. This entire second half has primarily been a battle of field position. And we see it once again with Bryn Six punt. The battle of the punters. <laughs> yeah, Landon Bailey against Trevor Bryn Six. I mean, they've been by far the two of the busiest members here from both teams. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Robinson the snap, hands it off to Owens. 
Owens fighting his way forward for a pickup there of about two. Brought down in the process by Chris Rabino. Second down at eight. 7.55 to go here in the fourth. Three wide, rather four are the Bison. Handoff goes to Owens instead, cutting to the left side. Huge hole for Owens, first down and more. Still on his feet, down to the 39 yard line. A pickup there of 27 for Trey Owens. And a huge moving of the chains. Yeah, huge run there by Trey Owens. Saw a wide open hole, hit the hole, and I thought he was gonna be gone. Trey Owens has that capability as being one of the best running backs in the PAC conference. He's got that dog in him, that's for sure. Yes, he does. Ends up going down as 28 for Owens. Robinson dropping back to pass, gonna float this one up. Mickens able to tiptoe the sideline. Needed 10, got 11. And it moves the chains once again. This offense is starting to heat up here, Drew. The last couple of drives have been a bunch very disappointing, and now it seems like Coach Robinson's finally got started to get his offense clicking again. Better late than never in that regard. Three wide are the Bison. Owens directly behind Robinson. Gets the ball, rather that's Hodo fighting his way over the 45 down to the 43. A gain of six there for Jaheim Hodo. Clock continuing to wind, six and a half now on the scoreboard to our right. Parker in motion and flags fly. It'll be a false start against the Bison. That penalty going against Aaron Baird. The guilty member of the Bison to now back it up to a second and nine. Might not seem like much, Dylan, but those five yards could be plenty costly here in the late yeah, stages. We're going the wrong way, Drew. Especially going forward, we're going backwards now. Hate to see it. Low snap, Robinson corrals, hands off to Hodo. Met almost immediately. Forward progress going to be stopped after a gain of one. Altenbach getting in there on the stop. Bring up now a third and eight. Big third down here for Bethany offense here, Drew. Very much so. This is a critical spot for them. Five of 11 to this point. Robinson the snap, fakes the handoff. Plenty of time, finds McCorder. And it appears he might be just about a yard short on the far sideline. Owens back in here for Hodo. The Bison are keeping the offense out there. A great catch there by McCorder. He's getting smothered by Vital Joseph the second there. And great catch, great catch there. And coming up just short. It looks like the Bethany offense should stay on the field. Maybe get Allegheny's mm -hmm. defensive line to jump. Or go to your bread and butter. Just hand it off to Trey Owens. They're bringing in Josh Kimase, the tight end now. Would mean more and more likely that they're going to hand the ball off. And now Coach Robinson calling a timeout as Kimase got in too late to get set before the play clock expired. Yeah, a bunch of miscommunication there between Robinson and the offense there. As you mentioned, it was... On the far side, incredible coverage from Vitel Joseph the second on Devon McCorder, but McCorder just able to snag that one before Joseph got there and ends up setting up this Bethany offense in prime position to keep the drive alive. There's a three inch differential between McCorder and Vitel Joseph the second there too. Absolutely, McCorder standing in at just 5'9". Vitale Joseph at an even six feet. A 
And now the Bison offense on the field. The tight end, Kimase, in the game. Owens lined up directly behind. Quarterback sneak as Robinson goes under center. And now the Bison are pointing to say as if he got the first. Allegheny are pointing as if he's short. It's going to be a close one here, Drew. This will be very close as our officiating crew starts to peel the pile. Robinson showing a little bit of trickery. Just approaching the line as if he was going to make a adjustment with the offensive line or point something out. And then ends up quickly snapping the ball himself. Oh, they get the chains out here to see. Allegheny continuing to signal as if they held him short. And the chains will, in fact, come out. He might be short. Possibly, maybe. It does look like, based on the original placement, that the ball is about half a yard short. Maybe the rest of the ball up that they did earlier. <laughs> yeah, can you move the ball up just about... Three inches? A little, a little inch, please. Yep, he's short. Yep, oh, way short. About half a yard short. Allegheny will take over on downs. First and 10 at their own 40 with 4.49 to go in regulation. And the Bison offense can't believe that they're still not out on the field. Yeah, it seems the offense is kind of upset with the offensive coordinator, Coach Robinson, down there. Trey Owens. Visibly frustrated that he didn't get the football. Same with some of the other linemen. They're kind yeah. of surprised that it was a QB sneak. They thought that Trey Owens was going to get the ball. So now a chance for the Gators. Handoff goes to Worship, cutting to the right side, barreling his way over the 45-yard line down to the 46, a pickup of six yards there. Another nice run there by Trey Worship there. Saw the hole, followed his lineman, and got about six there. And now, looks like a timeout called by Allegheny, possibly. Rather, just the official timeout. Yeah. Tony Lascola calling the timeout himself. Handoff goes to worship on second down. And he fights his way over midfield to move the chains. And the Gators continuing to use their no huddle offense. Handoff goes to Worship again, cutting to the right side. Met immediately by Jermaine Snodgrass as Worship just got back to the line of scrimmage. Clock continuing to wind. Under four, 3.52 to be exact. Dur Durant checks back into the game for Trey Worship. Expect Duran here to get some of these carries here. But average about five yards a clip. And again, Johnson hands it off to Doran up the middle. Pick up there of about two. It's going to set up a third and long here at the Bison 47. Be, be huge for the Bethany defense to get a stop here, Drew. Very big. Third and seven, rather third and eight. The Gators lining up four wide. Johnson in the shotgun, door on to his left. Play action pass, going to float this one out to Stelling on the far side. Stelling first down and more, and then shoved out of bounds well beyond the chains. A great read there by Jack Dawson, realizing that Sean Stealing, the tight end, was uncovered and got was wide open and just got more than enough yards for the first down there. Stelling. Covers there by the Bethany defense. Stelling hasn't been involved much today either as the handoff catch. I Goes believe. to Doron. Doron. Just shy of the 30, down to the 31. Pick up there of four. Brown I was going to say, I know he's been targeted a few times, but that was the first time 
called his name as far as bringing in the pass. He's been putting in some work blocking for Worship and Duran. Duran again, handoff up the gut. Over the 30, down to the 29. Two yard gain, gonna set up third and four. Tackled by T. Fofang. Fofang bringing down Doron. Pair of subs check in for the Gators. Rather a trio. As Worship checks in for Doron. Under two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Still tied at 17 apiece. Johnson going to hand this one off to Worship, cutting to the left side, fighting his way forward. First down for the Gators, down to the 23. And again, the run defense just continuing to be lackluster as Worship again gaining four. Down to the 19 now. Second and six. And that clock keeps on ticking down there, Drew. We got about a minute 10 left in the game. And now Coach Robinson gonna call a timeout. Try and preserve as much time on the clock as they can. With one ten to go. Of course, the logic for the bison. Call a timeout here. Call a timeout. Either after second down or after third down. Try to give your offense as much time as possible. After yep. Allegheny would presumably kick a field goal here if they don't pick up the first. Yeah, I feel regardless they're going to kick a field goal anyway. <clears throat> Bethany burn all their timeouts. Keep it on the ground. Let Bethany burn all their timeouts and then call a timeout with like under 10 seconds left and kick the game winning field goal here. That'd be devastating if we lost 20 to 17. Has been a low scoring second half. Just three points combined between the two teams. This half. In this half, yes. For 41, rather 21 yard field goal off of Garrett Paxton, 41 in white. The three lone points of the half. It was 17-14 Bison going into the break. Johnson dropping back to pass. Going to float this one up towards the end zone in the area of Declan O'Brien. Well incomplete. I'm kind of surprised, Drew, that they didn't just run the ball there. Yeah. Bison only have one timeout. Yeah. Was second down. Should have ran the ball and then made the Bison question when they were going to call that timeout. Yeah, I expect Allegheny's offense here to keep on the ground with Trey Worship and have Bethany burn that last timeout and then kick a field goal. It's third and six at the 20. Worship going to get the ball this time. Met almost immediately. John Henry Rouse getting in there. Going to be stopped about after a yard. Yeah, it seems like he just got a yard maybe. Jordan Aldridge in there as well bison. and the bison do in fact burn their final time out with exactly a minute to go and you can just tell this time out for the bison it's just a matter of stopping the clock getting some fluids in the special teams guys You would imagine the Bison are going to try and continue to preserve as much clock as they can. Garrett Paxton coming out to try the field goal. Yeah, a lot of pressure here for Ger Garrett Paxton here, Drew. 37 yarder. Garrett Paxton to attempt a 35 yard field goal. 35 yard field goal. 35 yard, yep. Bison crowd trying to influence things as much as possible. Stelling the holder, gets it down. Paxton's kick, it's low! Good. 
Paxton's kick is low. The Bison come away with a miracle. And with 57.2 seconds to go in regulation, there is hope for the green and white. Wow. Unbelievable. Paxton, he normally makes those. It's kind of surprised the kick, the kick was low. And it was just wide right. It wasn't even close to making it. And now Bethany with 57 seconds left. Hopefully can go down there. And hopefully John McCardle can get good field positions for John McCardle and he can kick the game-winning field goal, possibly. If not, we're going to OT, Drew, possibly. Yep. Certainly the scenario. McCardle's been practicing kicking into the net for the last handful of minutes. The Bison taking over at the 20-yard line. Would expect a very pass-heavy offense here. Robinson, just as I say that, hands it off to Trey Owens. And met immediately at the 25-yard line. The clock continuing to run. Doesn't seem like much of urgency here for the offense at all. I feel no. like they're just going to say, hey, forget it. We're just going to go to overtime, it feels like. The field position battle coming into effect once again. Robinson going to hand it off to Owens, and that's exactly what the Bison are going to do. As Owens is met almost immediately. No gain there for Owens. And the clock just continuing to wind down. And we are, in fact, going to be set for overtime as Bethany doesn't even have to run another play, and they aren't going to. End of regulation, tied 17-17. And for the first time all season, Bethany is heading to OT. Some good old BAC overtime football, Drew. Love to see it. Here on Senior Day, the Bison trying to finish off their home schedule with one final win here against Allegheny. The Gators trying to end their season on a high note. Of course, Allegheny technically having their bye week next week, but not really a bye week when there's no nothing to be played after that. Yeah. <laughs> As for the Bison, after this, they have one final game on the road at St. Vincent to conclude their 2022 campaign. Bethany trying to pick up a little bit of momentum going Team. into that final week. Yeah, team's getting fired up here in the start of OT. Trying to get some momentum here. Trying to potentially pull out their second victory of the season. John McArdle continuing to kick on the Bison sideline. <laughs> and now Coach Robinson continuing to have a quick conversation with Jordan Aldridge. Our officiating crew talking things over with the Bison sideline. Pair heading over to the Gators sideline. And now we will have a coin toss. Trey Owens, Jordan Aldridge, the captains for the Bison. As for Allegheny, Maxwell Hammond, along with Seth Jones. And the third representative, Liam Elker Connolly.
Allegheny has called tails. Allegheny will get the ball first. The end zone to our right. Ball will be placed at the 25 yard line. Johnson leading the Gator offense onto the field. Worship is the running back. Motion here. Left to right goes Dursey. Hand off to Worship. Met almost immediately by several Bison. Pick up there of two. Yeah, maybe about two there. Bethany's run defense has started to shut up here a little bit. Once again, better late than never, I guess. Set up a second and eight. Johnson faking the pass, play action to the near side into the hands of Ferguson, fighting his way forward towards the first down marker. Gonna drive his way down to the 11. Ferguson has enough to move the chains. Set up first and 10. At the 11, TJ Crowder, Gimpy coming to the Bison sideline. Three receivers wide for Allegheny. Handoff goes to Worship up the middle, met immediately, getting back to the original line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Fortunately for TJ Crowder, looks like just a little bit of a cramp. I know those do hurt, but certainly very non-severe injury. Johnson drops back to pass on second and 10. Going to float this one over the middle, finding Dursey. Tripped up down inside the five and going to be shoved out of bounds at the two-yard line. And now another Bison down on the sideline, Sean Wheeler. Hopefully Sean Wheeler is okay. He's down on the field in a lot of pain, it looks like. Yeah, he does appear to be in some discomfort. Uh, two. Sean Wheeler continuing to get treatment. Bison. Needing a big stand, it's gonna be third down at the three, third and one that is, as Wheeler gets helped off of the sideline. Not putting much weight at all on his right ankle. Davion Eason checks in now for Wheeler. Big stand needed for the Bison. Third and one at the three. Handoff goes to Worship, trying to cut to the outside. He gets tripped up. And now the question becomes, did he get there? Needing to get to the one. I think he's down at the, no, oh, say it's fourth down. I thought he got to the one. Got back to the line of scrimmage and now decision time for Allegheny. Huge decision at hand. You would think they learned from their mistake their mistake in last quarter when they tried to go for it on fourth down instead of taking the easy field goal. Yep, and they are as Paxton now heads out. Of course, Paxton missed a 35-yarder low and wide right with one minute to go in the fourth quarter that would have prevented overtime. 
And now Allegheny opting for a timeout. Are they going to try and go for it here? Surely not. I, I would hope not. I mean, because last I mean, time they won for it, it didn't, did not work when they could have just took the field goal, and they probably would have won in regulation if they would have. But you would think the coach, head coach for Allegheny learned his lesson. Rich just, Nagy, yeah. We'll just kick the extra, or not the extra point, the field goal here. It's only 19 yards. It's not like it's another 35 yard like Paxton missed in the fourth. Mm -hmm. And, and they take the timeout. Kick unit still on for the Gators. Rightfully so. Paxton going to deliver from the right hash. 19-yard kick set to come here for the sophomore out of Freedom, Pennsylvania. Takes two steps to his right. Hold is down from Stelling. Paxton's kick it's is good. up and good. Now 20-17 to 17 in favor of Allegheny. So now Bison will start at the 25 Big drive here for the Bethany offense, Drew. This is do or die. Yeah, do or die. They don't, they don't get a touchdown here or a field goal and game over. Allegheny yeah. will win. You would expect the first couple of plays, run it with Trey Owens, and then if it's third and long or something, maybe start packing the passing game. Worst case scenario, get John McCarro out there for a field goal, go to double OT. Absolutely. Got to keep the game going one way or another. Robinson going to hand it off to Owens, just as you said. Cutting to the left side. Pick up there of about one. Tackled by Hudson Allred. Hudson Allred bringing down Owens. Second and nine from the 24. McArdle continuing to get loose on the Bison sideline. Tight end, Kima say in motion from left to right. Three receivers lined up to the right for the Bison. Hand off up the middle, goes to Owens and is met immediately. A huge hit there. Brent, 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 his left tackle, Aaron Bird, got pushed back into Trey Owens and ended up losing a yard on that play. That was Elker Connolly who went through Aaron Baird and hit Owens. Set up now third and 10, back at the 25. Third and 10, you got to get... You gotta do something in the passing game here and get close enough to that first down marker. Bison line up four wide. Parker and McCorder in the slot. Munoz, Mickens out wide. Play action pass. Owens picks up a blocker and then Mickens and Robinson not on the same page. It'll bring up fourth and 10. This is do or die for the Bison right here. If they don't pick this first down up, it's ball game. Oh, looks like they're field goal the units. Field goal. Field goal units coming on. Chance for John McArdle to keep the game going. How long is this field goal, Drew? I believe it'll be about 42 yards. Number 26, John McArdle out to attempt. McCarl is two for two and for 30 up and they will, Bethany will call a timeout. A little bit of confusion yep. with the field goal unit here. Substitution errors. A lot of pressure on John McCardle here due to try and keep, send this game to double overtime. Coach Robinson wanting to talk things over, sort out the substitution errors. The wind's starting to pick up too. This might be a the wind might be a big factor in this upcoming kick for John McCardle here, Drew. Absolutely. And just to just to point this out, John McCardle, his longest field goal of the season, 30 yards. This is 40. This yards. is 42. 42. This is 12 yards more than his longest kick was. So this will be interesting here. Of course, if you talk to McArdle, 
He'll tell you he could hit this 100 times out of 100. But now the added pressure of the game on the line gives another stipulation to things. Hernandez on to hold. Hernandez gets the snap. McCardle's kick going to be well, well short. short. Possible block in there as well. The Bison fall in overtime to Allegheny, 20 to 17. And Dylan, you'd have to believe that one got blocked somewhere there at the line of scrimmage. Maybe they got maybe at least a finger or something on it. But yeah, it's devastating for John McCardle there. Kick was well short. He normally, well it looks, uh, he normally, well, like you said, he would say he could make those, but it looked like maybe a finger or two was got on there. And it's devastating on senior day, the Bison fall to the Allegheny Gators, 20 to 17 at the end of overtime. So the Bison will fall to one and eight overall, 0 and seven in conference play. As for Allegheny, they improve to an overall record of three and seven, two and six in PAC play. The Gators season comes to an end after a 20 to 17 overtime victory. Bethany, one final matchup next week in La Trobe, taking on St. Vincent in the regular season finale. We get set to wrap this one up here for you on the PAC Digital Network. The Bison got on the board first with a John McArdle 22 yard field goal. Trey Owens making it 10 nothing Bison with a two yard touchdown run. And we had Trevor Brinsick hitting Declan O'Brien for a 47 yard touchdown, made it 10-7 Bison over the Gators. Bethany answering back with a 58 yard touchdown strike from Marquise Robinson to Devon McCorder made it 17, made it 17-7. And then Bethany giving up the touchdown 26 yards on the ground there for John Ian Doron made it 17-14 going into the half. Garrett Paxton tacked on a 21-yard field goal in the third quarter, tying it at 17 apiece. And then Paxton's 19-yarder in overtime, ultimately making the difference here as the Bison come up just short and drop this tough, tough contest on senior day. Dylan, your thoughts on this one? Yeah. Really, this game really fell on the offense in the second half. In the first half, Bethany's offense looked really good, scoring 17 points. Second half, didn't come close to the red zone at all. Had two turnovers in the second half, and they just couldn't do anything in the second half, dude. It was very disappointing based on the first half performance of the Bethany offense. And a tough loss here for the Bison on senior day. Really felt like Bethany really won the win for their seniors today, Drew. Absolutely, win for the seniors, win for the final time here at home. And the story of the season for the Bethany football team just continues to be lack of execution on offense. Once again, Allegheny season comes to an end. They finish 3-7, and 2-6 and six in conference play. The Bison falling to 1-8, and 0-7 oh in conference play, heading to St. Vincent next week for the final matchup. That'll do it for us here at Don Alt Field. Once again, your final score, Allegheny 20, Bethany 17 in overtime. Signing off here on the PAC Digital Network, Drew Von Sayo and Dylan Bazika. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be sure to support Bethany's volleyball team in the PAC Championship at Teal starting at 4.30 and men's soccer kicking off in Franciscan at 7 p.m. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. Good weekend, everybody.